So back here in Canada, in Winnipeg, yes. in Newfoundland, in Toronto, we try to build an industry. You come back, you write, you make series, you have peaks to your career, you have troughs to your career, another peak. We try to build a Canadian version of an arts scene, an industry, mm -hmm. uh, whatever, dream factory. And after 40, 50 years, we haven't. I know. I know. It's amazing. Why? We had, we had an industry and people. We had an industry full of people, all sorts of performers of all kinds. Performers and wonderful sort of more stars than there are in heaven, MGMs. I mean, we had our people. There was a time we had five or six reigning uh, singing stars in this country, just on CBC alone. Mm -hmm. And I lived in Winnipeg, and I knew every face on that screen. So and they, they were, they were the, our stars at that time. Why? Why can't we? What, what's stopping us actually creating it for you know, these guys who want to work in the industry eventually? I think we've, it's not as though we, you know, it's like, for example, um, all right, my example would be, if I send scripts out to directors, for example, or producers, they may be of your mind in terms of what they really like to do, but in the meantime, they say no to you because, not because they don't have good taste or anything else, but they say no to you because it's not uh, not what's going, not what's laid down. There's, there's, it's funny. It's it's uh, and that's a strange way of putting it. It, it feels like a, a like we're on a we've been given space to watch what happens elsewhere. You know, we are sec we're, we're secondary in terms. They'll they'll give us good seats to watch what they're doing. But uh, will not be heavily involved, and and it's very it's very strange. Jack Valenti came up that time, remember? And I, one of the things he was here to talk about, or Jack, at least Jack Valenti is the advocate for the American Motion Picture Association. Yes, or? advocate for the uh, American uh, Film uh, Institute. Yeah, is that what it's called. Yeah, and he said, uh, "Well, you didn't uh, you didn't believe in your um, box office people." You didn't believe in box office. You should have had stars here of galore by now. He said, but if you had believed in your, if you didn't in, uh, invested in your box office, which he meant by popular, popular appeal, uh, you know, performers and uh, others. He said, you would have had those people by now. You would have had your company by now. And he said, if you're not going to do it, such as distribute properly, we'll do it. It's almost as if they were waiting to see if we were going to do it, and we haven't, really. We keep going back to to that area you were talking about. Watching someone else do it. Yeah, watching someone else do it, and happy to get the call, you know. Um, but in Quebec, Quebec builds its own star system, its own television star system, its own film star system. Right. And they will go and watch uh, someone who, you know, a Quebec performer at the uh, Rideau Vert, and then they'll watch them in a TV series. And captive audience, captive yeah. this, and that, you know. But it's we like won't. It's all an island. It's all as, as, if, as if they were surrounded by water. And Newfoundland had that same thing, by the way. When Newfoundland started, I remember a number of wonderful musical groups that ran, in, ran themselves out in Newfoundland because they didn't leave or didn't want to. So it was all done inside. And when I was growing up, I was not aware of any of the visual arts as being a special kind of um, contribution to society in that sense. But now, the painters in Newfoundland are extraordinary. Yeah. Leah says to me, Gordon, Daddy, do your, put your work out there. Let, them, let people see it. I said, no, no. The wonderful things that are being done now and in Newfoundland, it's quite special. There was that song, Thank God We're Surrounded by Water. And they made this place, you know, special. And that's why it's had its 
moments, obviously. They move, they've centralized, they've pushed people in and out of, of coves and things. But what a, what a place to what a place to go and what a place to to build your your uh, your caliber, you know. There just to be, from from Newfoundland. There is a, a stream of of painters, of writers, of of comics, of satirists, of actors that you know, Rick Mercer. Let's go down the I list know. of them. I know. Uh, what is it about that rock that keeps these? And it's not that they're just good comics or good actors or whatever. There's a voice inside them. There's a unique voice. And it's yeah. not just a Newfoundland voice. There's something, you know, Mary Walsh. I yeah. mean, Mary, yeah. all her wild and different talents on top, you connect to her because there's this force, this I voice know. coming out. It's not uh, encumbered or compromised or, or corporatized or in whatever way. And huh. what is it about Newfoundland that does that it's built from it's built from the truth of of what you want to do first when it's built that way it's as true as anything you can add to it then you can dress it up you can put costumes on it but the idea remains the same it's solid it came from a very true uh, need this need to to do something that is particularly your 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 own yours it and it seemed to it seemed to come. You can't stop it from coming up. It's part of you, and it's that particular thing. And later on, if they felt like leaving the place to go elsewhere, they'll take it with them. I used to, when I was a child, there was a rock down by a cove, and it's still there now. And it's a huge round boulder. It's almost pink-like. It's so it's sort of yellow pink. It's huge and so different from every other rock there and when I did a job for the Geo Center in St. John's where rock history and so on I was told what the name of it was I can't remember now but they said yeah it's different that way because again Ice Age when everything landed <laughs> when everything came it was left these are this is how they were left and that particular rock anyway I used to sit on it a lot and watch the water, watch the river go by, you know? And I took the rock with me when I left. That's how I feel. I took that rock with me so that if I go across the country or go anywhere, you know, um, uh, I, I feel as though I can recall some of that, that sort of feeling that came from, from that. There is a parallel with, again, a parallel with Newfoundland and Quebec that both have, you just described, a place, an imaginative physical place, the rock surrounded by water. Yes. The Quebecers, it, they have an imaginative place. It's an isolated because they're French in North America. That's right. But they have, they have an imagined place that they write from, that they come from, that they speak from. So if Newfoundland has that imagined place and physical place, and Quebec has it, and both of that has, that has spurred all that creativity that's gone on, by implication, English Canada doesn't have that imagined place. Mm -hmm. We don't have it. Why? Because we're too wide, too long. America has it. They have it. the myth, the dream, the democracy, the freedom. But we don't have a strong imagined place yet from which that creative voice seems to come. And why have we never, I know we have the mountains, we got Northern Ontario, we got, you know, uh, BC, yeah. beautiful BC, we've got Haida Gwaii, but somehow it hasn't come together as a vibrant, imagined world from which the creators then want to speak. I think it's because we've been afraid to be the only game in town at anything we do. And uh, by that I mean isolated individuals can have a, a talent to do something. But they, but they're not. But we haven't sort of uh, handed it over to. Uh, uh, we haven't haven't handed it over to the rest of the unit, or put the units all together and say we are big enough now. We can do our thing. The business of uh, only game in town has struck me, sadly, for quite a while. Oh, CBC can be and should be the only game in town doing it what it's doing and not have to worry about competition or anything else. 
They should just simply have been what they were at one time. They should have brought some of those recipes with them as to how to how to be different from anything else that's going on around them, mm. but without having to get back, get, you know, get into the same sort of roles, the same role playing of how to exist in this business. And and I think you know they could have uh, they could have done that a bit more and. If they started doing that, I think they'd stand out. They would be the only game in town. And we'd all stand back and say, quite different. I used to have this idea about Canada, and every, every so often somebody will say, well, what would you do to promote it? What would you do to uh, uh, improve where you are, what's going on, and so on? And I, I used to have a silly thought, and I've said this to two governor generals of Canada, and just as an idea, I didn't have it down on paper or anything, but I thought, for example, we're also sort of shy of each other, we're one province to another. What is so wrong if you can go down Young Street and see pennants tied to lampposts and uh, it's telling you that a new show is coming to town or something's going to happen? Why is it not possible, and I know it sounds going to sound silly, for every province to have a day devoted to another province. So you have an Alberta day. School kids are given the day off to study Alberta, to go to the libraries, to go here and there and so on, learn something about the, the next one or the one over, as opposed to simply, you know? And you could take it from province to province, you could go to city to city. You could do a BC day, you could do a Vancouver city day. Uh, and I don't know, there's something that might be possible to sort of blend a bit more. Then we can think in giant-sized, 